Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you on this uh, third Sunday of Easter tide. Third Sunday of Easter. Just a couple of brief announcements. We continue uh, with our podcast of listening to and talking about seen on radio, seeing white this Wednesday night at from 6 to 7.30. You would have seen the announcement in the e-news, so pay attention to that if you'd like to join. It's not too late. You can join any one of the weeks. Each week really sort of stands alone, though we are building community by talking together. You can certainly come to any one of them. This week we'll be listening to, uh, we will have listened to episodes four and five in preparation for our evening together. The vigil will happen at one o'clock today. Coughlin at nine o'clock tonight. Stan, do you have anything? No? I'm good. He's good. All right. I think that's all I have for announcements for us. So bring us into silence and prepare your hearts and bodies and souls to worship God.
going to ask you to do what you did last week, which is to unmute yourself, please, to respond to this opening. We're going to have another Alleluia cacophony because it's fun. <laughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. 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 And you can mute yourselves again, please. So with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our power or piety, we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this, we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. 
Here ends the reading. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Here ends the reading.
according to Luke. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arouse, arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Here ends the reading. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This might be your first season of Easter in the Episcopal Church, or it might be your 61st. And I wonder if you have noticed that on Sundays, during the long season of Easter, we will not receive a lesson from the Old Testament other than the Psalms. All of the rest of the year, every Sunday in every other liturgical season, we receive scripture from the Old Testament. Even in morning prayer during the first week of Easter, the option is given to hear from the Acts of the Apostles rather than the Old Testament. During Eastertide, every Sunday, the Old Testament lesson is replaced by a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. We hear Sunday after Sunday of the amazing works the Apostles performed. We hear of their courage. We hear of miracles and jail breaks and of baptisms and prayer. We hear of the disciples in action, risking life and limb, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ all over the land. This is meant to encourage us, I believe. It is meant to remind the church of the real consequences of the resurrection. If we really believe it happened, then we must proclaim it boldly. We must expect miracles. We must invite healing. We must take risks. We must act. But there is also something else here that we might wish to pay attention to, and that is time, chronos time. The stories we hear from the Acts of the Apostles don't take place the day after the resurrection or even the week after. It is actually months later. In the Gospel of Luke that we heard this morning, we receive the fear and doubt of the disciples. In Kronos time, 
It has been some five or six weeks since Jesus' resurrection. And the disciples have spent that time together, talking, praying, afraid, fishing, trying to figure out what to do next, trying to make sense of it all. They saw the empty tomb. They heard Mary's story of seeing Jesus. They heard of various resurrection appearances, but they were still uncertain. And into this uncertainty, Jesus enters and asks for a piece of fish to prove that his resurrection is not a hoax, that he is not a spirit, but is very much real. In the Gospel of Luke, this is followed immediately by Jesus' ascension. We know from the Acts of the Apostles the rough passage of time from the death of Jesus to the day of his ascension, 40 days, and from then to the descent of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, another 10 days, for a total of 50 days. And for those 50 days, the disciples were a bit lost. Oh, they saw Jesus. They watched him eat. He fed them fish. He walked with them to Emmaus. He let them touch his wounds. He breathed peace on them and called them his witnesses. And yet, and yet, the disciples were still stuck, still uncertain, still not clear just what they were supposed to be doing. And it wasn't until the Holy Spirit came upon them at Pentecost, which we will not celebrate for several more weeks, that everything changed. All the stories we hear during Eastertide take place after Pentecost. I, for one, take comfort in that. Because isn't this a crazy thing that we believe? A crazy, wonderful thing? That Jesus Christ rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and gives us the Holy Spirit as our guide? A crazy, wonderful thing. Even those who knew Jesus best struggled with all of that. And I find that comforting. Because there are some days that I also struggle to live this resurrection life. This life of healing and prayer and witness and miracles and risks and certainty. Maybe you do too. There are some days when I really just want Jesus to show up and cook me some fish or break bread and explain all of scripture while he breathes peace into my heart. And yet there are also some days when I am ready to bust out of jail, try out some healing and preach from the rooftops. The truth is our faith journey is complicated it is not smooth and straight. There are ups and downs, hills and valleys. The good news is that we are in it together. Like the disciples, we can hold one another up. We can help Thomas to touch the wounds, listen with rapt attention as Cleopas tells the story of the road to Emmaus. We can hold Mary as she weeps with joy. We can rejoice with Matthias as he is appointed to take the place of Judas. We can bring those who need healing to the edge of the pool and gently lower them in. We can breathe peace to those who need it. Baptize and we can baptize and we can baptize some more. And the good news is also this. Jesus will be with us in all of the places we find ourselves, tending the fire when we are cold or hungry or lost. 
encouraging us to forgiveness and reconciliation when we are scared or confused or uncertain, feeding us with himself when we are hungry or hurting, rejoicing with us when we are healed, loved, prayed for, and fed. This crazy thing we believe, this crazy, wonderful thing is really real. And it's here for us, all of us, meeting us wherever we are and leading us home. Rejoice and be glad, people of God, for Christ is risen indeed. Let us affirm this crazy, wonderful faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our Bishop Shannon, our Dean Greta, St. Martin's Church Fairley, the Reverend Mark Peace, Priest Rector, the Church of Ireland, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the Church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well being of all people especially the people of Minneapolis at this time of tension and justice seek. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison, for Jean, Bill, Carol, Ella, Ted, Chuck, Ron and Jackie, Michael, Lillian, Daniel, Peter, Sandy, Stuart, Mary and Simon, Emily, Marion, Rachel, Elizabeth, Margaret, Dave, Pat, 
Rick, Debbie, Naomi, and Helen. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God for a deeper knowledge of God, especially for our seminarian, Rand Penningfeld, for those in the discernment process, Susan McMillan, Kenzo Ahn, and for members of the Youth Confirmation Group, Anna, Emma, Jonas, Gong, sorry, Nong, Paige, Sylvia and Thomas. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially for the repose of the soul of Kim Dougherty and for all victims of gun violence, especially Dante Wright killed by police this week in Minneapolis, and the eight people killed in the mass shooting in Indianapolis, four of whom were members of the Sikh community. Let us remember their names. Amarjeet Johal, Jas Windersinj, Amarjeet Sekhan, Jas Windercower, Samaria Blackwell, John Weissart, Carly Smith, Matthew R. Alexander, may they rise in grace and glory. Pray for those who have died. I ask your thanksgiving for friends and family, for those celebrating birthdays this week, Joe Gianella, Constance Quinby, for Earth Day activities this Thursday, the light they shed on small and large actions to protect our environment. And for the continuing BIPOC vaccination clinics being held here in our own urban cathedral. Pray in gratitude for all of God's blessings. At this time, please offer your prayers either silently or aloud at home, or enter them into the chat box. We pray also for healing for Byron and Don, for healing for Nancy and Ian, and comfort for Ian, for the repose of the soul of Chelsea Sullivan and all who mourn her loss, Prayers for all those who are struggling with the construct of whiteness in our society. Pray for Jennifer Fuller, who has died after a long and courageous battle with drug addiction and for her family who mourn. For the repose of the soul of Dolores DeForge. Prayers for Rachel and for Robert. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Direct us, O Lord, in all of our doings with your most gracious favor. And further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name. And finally, by your mercy, attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lifting all of our prayers before you, O Lord, praying in the language that is closest to our hearts, we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> peace you brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, revealed to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon and among you this day, and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.